I'm Scott Allen Miller. It's the 25th of November, 2022, and this is my vlog of daily life in Nicaragua. And as you can tell, I am in my office for one of the final opportunities to make a video in this office because I am really far behind on the videos and I'm not as far behind as I was two days ago. I am still a little bit behind and definitely behind the proverbial eight ball. So I didn't want to take a chance of not getting anything done tonight and miss anything in the future. So I am doing a video from here. I apologize. I know this is not the most glamorous of locations and the ring light on my face is not the most glamorous of lighting. This is the most drab, tiny little space we could possibly come up with. I am moving, I was supposed to be moving in, in the real time, I'm supposed to be moving tomorrow. We had something come up. I'm not going to get to move at 9 a.m. like I was hoping, but the move is coming very, very quickly. And uh, hopefully this, this will be pretty much the end of this space. Uh, so today is Friday, and the thing we're going to be talking about today is the culture of the fiesta, the celebration of life here in Nicaragua. And the reason that we're going to be covering that today is because today is a big holiday day here in Sutiaba. Okay, I live in León, but we're moving to Sutiaba, and we're going to treat it like we live in Sutiaba. I own a place in Sutiaba, so I can count myself as a Sutiavian. Suta I don't know. Uh, so uh, this morning, uh, very busy out at the hotel. Paul and Dominica went out to the beach and we're out there um, all morning working. They were able to bring back lunch, which is nice. And uh, I was pretty much stuck in the office all day. Very, very busy day. Nothing to really, not bad. Just it's been, this week is just been busy. And this coming weekend is going to be super busy because we have we have a bit of stuff going on tomorrow. And then Sunday and Monday, we're going to be in Managua celebrating my eldest daughter, Liesl's birthday. I often say that people say, ah, your eldest daughter, Liesl. What about the younger daughter, Liesl? <laughs> yes, I know the pun. Okay, so, uh, so that's going to be coming up. So I know I'm going to be just swamped with things because of that. Today, I had known I wanted to go uh, film at the Myths and Legends party. I don't really know its name, um, out at, uh, in Sutiava. And I actually totally forgot about it because work was so busy and I was trying to make dinner plans. And I was like, I'm just giving up on everything. I just wanted to relax and, and get some work done. Um, and that wasn't really happening. And then in the uh, middle of the afternoon, uh, Paul suddenly grabbed me and he's like, you probably want to come out and film this. And we ran out to the street in La Barrio and the, um, a lot of the, the characters that are getting ready for the Miss and Legends Festival were coming down the street. So I managed to get some video of uh, in Leon proper here in La Barrio. We are one of the core barrios um, of the people who are all dressed up in the traditional indigenous um, story costumes, the gigantes, the gigantono, and I don't know what the, the small character's name is, um, and they were heading down the street in droves to go down to uh, Sutiaba, so they're heading straight there. Um, and if you watch my shorts, some of this was in there and some of the festival was there, so, but a lot more footage here. Um, so I watched that happen and then I went back to work for a while, waited for it to get dark, tried to get anyone to go with me and nobody felt like going to the festival with me, which was really a bummer because this one seemed good. Like I wanted the kids to go and we had some friends from Managua that wanted to go, but they couldn't make it. And Alan and Anna didn't really feel like going out. And Paul was even like, send me your location, but then he didn't feel like going. Um, and so I, on my own, I just grabbed uh, the, the iPhone. I didn't take anything special because I learned my lesson from last time, lugging the big camera all the way down to Sutiava just to find out that there was nothing going on. I didn't want to do that. So I just took the iPhone and walked on my own all the way down to the main plaza, to the Plaza Mayor in uh, Sutiava on the Parque Central. And unlike the last time, this time the festival was off the hook. So this is the, the, the festival or whatever of myths and legends. Uh, and that is the same name as the museum on our street on 4th Avenue in Laborio, uh, where Laborio's main road runs into uh, the street going up to the Basilica uh, in El Centro. Um, and, uh, so there's this really famous museum, um, dedicated to, and, and a lot of the myths and legends of Nicaragua are from Leon. This is a very old colonial region. It is also a much older indigenous region. So a lot of the pre-colonial, like, myths and legends come from this area, specifically from Sutiaba. And a lot of the colonial myths and legends come from Leon. And so the combination is there's just a lot of that stuff is here. So if you go to the museums and you hear those stories, one of the things that we found really interesting is that uh, those stories are like, oh, so this famous thing that happened, happened in Laborio. And we're like, 
what the, it had to be within like two or three blocks of our house. Like that's really cool. When I lived in New York in the Hudson Valley where Liesl was born um, and where Luciana lived when she was about three is uh, we're very close to like Sleepy Hollow, right? Or, or Terrytown, which became Sleepy Hollow uh, in the story. And then eventually they renamed Terrytown to Sleepy Hollow for the tourists. But um, so the, the, the legend of Sleepy Hollow, like all that stuff actually took place just a few miles away and that was really neat to have such an important story and, and uh, cultural thing that was actually in in physical reality so close uh, which is something I never really had growing up in Western New York um, any stories of like colonial America or uh, you know old old American stories yes some of the indigenous stuff like the Indians the Senecas and and the Oneontas and that and those groups who the Iroquois who lived there where I grew up um, some of that stuff did, in theory, happen directly where uh, I grew up, but it was, um, there's so little history. It's like this very, very cloudy, fuzzy, foggy kind of story of there used to be Indians here. Were there? Where? Like there's no signs left, right? Everything's been wiped away. Um, and and so it's, it's a very different feeling. And when you, you get those stories in America of the American Indian in, in history, um, it's often, you know, the Plains Indians and the driving of the buffalo and all these things that are so disconnected from life in Western New York that even though uh, the very, very important Iroquois Confederation, this empire of, of pre-Columbian uh, life in the Americas happened right where I grew up, we're so disconnected from it that it's hard to even figure out what they mean it happened here. What do you mean it happened here where, right? Um, and, and everything else, all, all the colonial America stuff didn't happen in that region. And so there's just a lot of like, uh, oh, you know, history is a thing that happened somewhere else. It's not like growing up in Europe and being like growing up in the remnants of the Roman empire. When they talk about Rome or Greece or whatever, it's like, ah, at 800 years ago, that this is what was here. And 700 years ago, this is what was here. They don't have that stuff. Um, especially in Western New York, uh, you can go back and be like 100 years ago, there was a guy here with a general store. Now it's a grocery store, right? Ooh, right. It's not. It's not the same kind of history. Uh, here in Leon, there's these really ancient myths and legends and stories and actual histories that happened here, um, and it's right here, right? Like you can see the places, the street that it happened, the corner that it happened, the house that it happened, and in many cases, those buildings are still there. There's there's history everywhere you go, deep history, monuments, markers. And it's like, wow. And it wasn't like a thing that happened here when this was a field. It was when this street was still this street and that house was still here. And that's the window they were looking at when this happened, right? It's it's a very different feel. So going to the museum here in Leon is full of stuff that applies here, but you can go anywhere in, in Nicaragua and those stories apply here. Uh, and then the same thing in Sutiava, it, it has so much of these old stories. And uh, so this is the festival because Sutiava is so steeped in this history. Uh, Sutiava has this big festival, um, and I'm sure they, there's a ton of things. If I had someone who really knew the myths and legends and had all that story and could narrate for us, um, that would have been really cool. And I hope by next year we can have some of those things uh, because I'm sure it'd be way more interesting. Um, now, this particular festival, while it's to celebrate the myths and legends, there wasn't the amount of that kind of stuff going on. This was much more a, we are into our myths and legends, but this is a carnival for the family. And so it was pretty cool, actually. So the the, the plaza, the, the central park in Tsukiyaba is very large and beautiful. It is a classic European style square, more so than anywhere else in Nicaragua that I've been. And uh, it would remind you something of like uh, Western Spain, um, Islandia in Greece like those kind of like really old Venetian era square kind of thing very cool and um, uh, so they had the entire thing which is quite large full of amusement park attractions so roller coasters and tilt to worlds and those kinds of things and lots of food vendors and some, some you know knick-knack vendors there, there's always people selling wallets and purses and, and jewelry and that kind of stuff uh, and then there were many makeshift bars they actually had full tents with with fences around them and tables and bartenders going on um, probably about five of those uh, and probably 20 to 30 restaurants or, or places to eat food trucks and stuff lots of pizza lots of fried chicken um, a pretty good variety of food uh, 
uh, and then lots of games and, and amusement park rides and stuff. And then people on all the blocks around uh, were all sprawled out and just hanging out and eating or watching or, you know, fooling around or whatever. It was a really good crowd. And as I was there, there were buses still pulling up and disgorging people um, and like nobody leaving. So everything you see in my videos is it when it was apparently just ramping up, which would make sense because things in Nicaragua tend to go later in the day. And I was there relatively early. Uh, so this was, I think, the early hours of the event. Um, and there were lots of bands showing up and people who were all dressed up in costume. Um, so probably there was going to be a lot of live music and presentations and there's always a parade and all kinds of stuff and I didn't get any of that I didn't want to stay too late because I was by myself um, and it's not the kind of food that I can really eat it's it's like always meat um, I guess I could have gotten some pizza actually that would have been really interesting but um, being by myself uh, take something out of it but it was a really cool event to see and once I filmed it everybody was like oh I really wish we would have gone with you because <laughs> uh, it really did look like fun so um, that was my evening. I'm glad I got to record that for you guys. Uh, I hope that we can get more of that in the future, but that was that was certainly fun. But it's going to be an exhausting weekend coming up, and it's been such a long week that uh, really putting in many hours on this tonight was just not realistic. Thanks for joining me. Please remember to like and subscribe if you have any questions, comments, put them below. Uh, we have such a great community, so much uh, great conversation down there. If you'd like to buy me a coffee and sponsor the show, you can buy me a coffee. Uh, it's buymeacoffee.com slash Scott Allen Miller. That comes directly to me and makes a huge difference. And I've been getting so much uh, support through that. Thank you so much to everyone. And of course, if you could share this on social media, tell your friends about the show, it makes a huge difference. Thanks for joining me. I will see all of you tomorrow.